tonight, Scorin Gorin Hunyak uh, is going to come up and, and give his story. Uh, a lot of you guys already know him, but he was born in Croatia, played professional soccer, both indoor and outdoor, for 19 years. He has played in 18 different countries. He has four years of professional coaching experience, and God blessed him with different accomplishments and honors during his professional career. Some of Gorin's accomplishments are seven-time All-Star, one of 10 players in U.S. history to score over 1,000 points, and a member of the U.S. national indoor team at the 1996 World Cup in Spain, and supposedly has extremely good calves for a soccer player. I don't know if that's true or not, but Goran, why don't you come on up, and i uh, anxious to hear. Thank you. Good evening. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. I don't know if I can add anything else after beautiful three testimony already of importance of being coach. But uh, I'm going to be very short. So I told the angel if I'm taking too long, they sli slowly start creeping behind me and let me know that I need to get off the <coughs> platform. Uh, one thing came to my mind today to share with you. It's a three verses before I give my testimony and maybe be able to give you a story of my life. One is the proverb 69, man plan his way, but the Lord direct his steps. The second one, you all heard before that when Jesus challenged his disciple and told him, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And the third one is uh, Corinthians 3, 8. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. Each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. I hope after I summarize my testimony and giving you my story of my life, <clears throat> that these three verses are going to speak a little bit louder to you than just in the beginning of my testimony. I want to share the story of my life personally. It's not my story. It's a God story. He gave it to me. And I'm hoping as a coach and a former athlete, I will challenge you and inspire you in one way or the other. That was my prayer because before I came here. I was born and raised in Croatia, small European country. Unique about that country, obviously, you heard about a World Cup lately, one of the smallest countries making the final. Uh, only four and a half million people live there. That country, when I was growing up, was a communist country. They didn't have a freedom of speech. They didn't have a freedom like this country have. So I was growing up, and life for me was just the playing soccer. I didn't never heard of the Bible. I never be able to saw the Bible till I came in the United States. So the first toy that I ever have and only toy that I have was a soccer ball. I grew up in a time you didn't have uh, computers, internet, cell phone, computer game. Imagine life without that. I know a lot of you probably can relate it to me, some of you, but some of you cannot even imagine life without this necessity that you have now today. So soccer was my passion. Um, I came to the United States um, when I was uh, 22 years old. I got married. My wife, uh, Gina, is the first one to introduce me to the spiritual thing. I'm a father of three children, and I have eight grandchildren. I'm 55 years old man, expecting the ninth grandchild this July. So as you see, I really try to obey the God and become fruitful and multiply in a real way. <clears throat> Not by my plan, by any means, and I don't take any credit for that whatsoever. But my life was all wrapped up in my dream to become a soccer player. And as a player, as a child, and later on become a young adult and become playing professionally <clears throat> and be able to travel and have exciting life for almost 19 years playing professionally outdoor and indoor in the United States and multiple other countries, I never have peace. I never have a joy. I can only share that I have ex excitement to be on a soccer field. It is excitement to be able to play in front of 95,000 people, but it's all temporarily. So the longer I was playing, I couldn't figure out why I was missing something that I couldn't figure out as a young man. And I'd never have peace, never purpose. Soccer never gave me purpose in life. It gave me excitement and enjoyment but it was short, short time enjoying that part of the life. My wife was courageous enough to share the gospel. Actually, that was her ultimately 
desire that she doesn't want to have a relationship with somebody who do not know the Jesus. So she took a first step to share the Christ with me. I accepted Christ as a Lord and Savior. We got married, started having life, but our marriage was upside down. Instead of me being spiritual leader, my wife was a spiritual leader for the first seven years of my marriage. And as I become weary in my personal life, living and chasing my dreams and chasing my job, <clears throat> and become empty, I realized there have to be something more in my life. In 1996, for the first time in my life, I opened the Bible on my own term. Not by be being invited by my wife to the Bible study, which I never really resisted. I always follow it. <clears throat> and going to the church with her when she invited me. I opened the first time Gideon Bible in hotel room in 1996 in Boston, Massachusetts. Before the one game in MLS that we were playing against New, York, uh, New uh, England Revolution. And as I started reading the Bible for the first time, and day after that, all of a sudden my life changed. It changed in such a dramatic way, and in such a way that i realizing, whoa, no wonder my life never had peace and joy and fulfillment. Because my life was not in harmony with God's will. For seven years I want to be a Christian, and, and one time here when I'm struggling and have a difficult time, and then I want to live my life without a God and not be able to have nothing to do with Him. And as I read the scripture, I start reading the scripture, God start getting hold of my heart. And I realize, wow, there are so many things in my life. I was truly sheep without a shepherd. I was trying to do everything on my own power and my own way. And as I read the scripture and I start to submit myself to the word of God, I become a better husband, a better father. My life becomes having more meaning in my life. Everything changed. And I have different totally outlook. And I know a lot of you guys are Christian here, so I'm speaking to the choir right now. But the importance of that is that as I, my ch life changed, I start influencing the people near me. And I couldn't stop to just be able to make changes in my own personal life with my family. I start actually sharing the gospel with people around me. I start reading the scripture and Bible, especially in airplane. I remember in 96, 97, we travel so much. Sometimes I will play outdoor and indoor season back to back. We will have 120 games without any rest in a period of maybe 14 months. And during that time, I will develop sometimes bad experience with flying. And almost we have a two major uh, plane crash with terrible. One time we strike with the, by the plane was strike by lightning. One time we were right in the middle of the store in Florida. I thought we were going down. So I developed a fear of flying. And I started reading the Bible. Every time I will fly, I will read the Bible. And every time I read the Bible, I will have peace. Fear will be gone. And players will start around me, become very intriguing. Some of them make fun of me. What in the world happened to your life? You're reading the scripture now. They never saw me reading the scripture. They make fun of me, making joke. You know, a lot of athletes are very suspicious. They really believe there is some high power. But they really do not know. A lot of them are suspicious. I, I play with the players who need to tie his shoes 33 times and untie them before a game. I mean, that's how he thought he's going to play well. Not a place he have to hold his shoes as he's flying. He have to have them right underneath him. He will never check out his shoes. He will always hold them. So we all down deep know there is something greater power behind us. There is some invisible war existing. But we don't want to be submissive to it. And as I'm reading the scripture and be able to share in the gospel, I become a new man, changing all of my personal life. And as we were praying with my wife, how can my life make more impact? What direction did God want to lead me? I was become almost 33, 34 years old man. My career was coming to the end. All of my life, all things I did was actually playing and chasing soccer ball. I never done anything else. I didn't even, couldn't imagine the life without a soccer. But I have no idea which direction God want to lead me. We start fasting as a husband and wife once a week. I started reading the scripture. We started having Bible study with the kids every day. My wife made a transition, started homeschooling kids when my daughter was eighth grader. Our life was changed upside down. My in-laws could not even believe it from my wife's side. What taking place truly was radically changed. And life was being become more fulfilled. 
But what happened by, by that time, as we were seeking God, as we were drawing near to God, as you know, Scripture doesn't promise that we're going to have an easy life. In contrary, the more we want to serve God, sometimes we're going adver- to uh, uh, facing adversity. And what happened to our life almost 20 years ago, this June 2nd, we're going to celebrating 20 years of anniversary when my wife was standing in a kitchen. We were living in New Jersey. I was playing in Philadelphia and tried to make a homemade pizza. And she grabbed the stove, uh, 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 what is it called, the cooking pan on a, with her left side, and with the right hand she grabbed the refrigerator door, and that moment she started getting electrocuted. 220 volts was actually riding through her body. Because day before, there was a maintenance guy there trying to fix that stove. And he messed it up. He didn't ground the stove. And when she grabbed it for the first time after she turned it on, she was being electrocuted. Long story short, she ended up with a permanent brain damage. She was in hospital for three days. Uh, she came back from hospital. She started having 40 seizures a day. She became paralyzed for days. She could never be in any light like this, any noise, any touch. All these sensory nerves were causing her seizures. She was confined in the four rooms in total darkness. The family, the people who want to serve God, people who surrender God to you, all of a sudden we find ourselves, our life was changed upside down. I have a five-year-old, eight-year-old, and 15-year-old, and I have a wife be able to have uncontrollable movement, totally be paralyzed at that time. I thought, I'm just going to be gone. I, I didn't know how in the world I'm going to handle this. I cry at the same time, and I have a peace at the same time. I never experienced that in my life. For two years, we didn't have anything but prayer. Every single day, I need to be in the Word of God, and I need to pray personally, because that could only get me through for the day. I never even imagined, not even couldn't thought about it, how long I'm going to even make it another day with my wife. I don't know if I'm going to be with her tomorrow or two days from now. We were in John Hopkins Medical Center in Baltimore, New York Medical Center in Manhattan, New York, Pennsylvania, any hospital, KU in Kansas, any testing that we done on a doctor says we can't help your wife. The electricity burned the left side of the burn, brain back side of the brain, your wife going to die. And every day she was getting worse and worse. But two years later, exactly on the day she got electrocuted, I was kneeling down in Overland Park on 119 and uh, Quahir, we were living close by there. And I prayed for my wife because my wife was in a dead bed. During the prayer, God healed my wife. It took five days to heal my wife in front of our children and me. God is the same God of yesterday, today, tomorrow. He never changed. And he never will change. And after five days, my wife never took one seizure pill. No medication. Either seizure seizure pill could never even help her. Seizure pill can only help her to notice maybe one or two minutes give her advance when the seizure is coming. Without them, she, it will come instantaneously. But after five days of healing, my wife was a completely new person. From that pain and suffering, ministry came. After that, we started having soccer camp. We called the Victory to Jesus Sports Ministry. We kind of model similar to Fellowship of Christian Athletes does. Just we do it for a lot younger children from 5 to 12. Because I work with a coach team maybe in early 20s. John Shore, I don't know if you guys remember, he was in the staff with some of the people here. So they kind of plugged me in 20 years ago with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. So I started started having kind of idea how to incorporate faith with sports. So when my wife was uh, here... We decided to go to full-time ministry. And we started having ministries called the Victory to Jesus. We have a soccer camp called Victory Soccer Camp throughout the metro and some other area. And we actually using the soccer, just a platform to bring children, teach them, offer them to have a great, wonderful time playing soccer, enjoy the game. But really what we want to teach them is really about a Christ, biblical principle, something they don't even realize what they need so desperately. 
<clears throat> so how can this be so impacting, important for you as you want to be introduced to the FCA, which is, I would say, 100 times bigger ministry than our ministry and my ministry, which is just a ministry that we do it as a family. I'm a one person, one coach who have desired to share the, the most important thing that I discover in my life, and I'm so glad. There is no greater thing than you can share with somebody the love of God and truth of His Word. Because that only thing is going to change that person's life. And during the 15 years of us being involved in sports ministry and very small capacity, we were able to impact in over 15,000 children and family. And over 3,700 children came to know the Christ. Now when you multiply that, I'm the only one coach. How many coaches the FCA going to be able to touch? How many coaches around the country, and especially here in Johnson County, FCA going to be able to equip? Because I was the man who came to this country and literally to the Bible. I was pursuing, and I'm so glad that somebody reached out to me beside my wife. There was other people that God brought to my life to try to get my attention because I was very stubborn and hard-headed. It took him a long time, and he was very patient with me. And I'm so glad that he never gave up on me. And I know there are so many people here who are living in Johnson County. I think this is the one of the most wealthiest county in the United States. For that meaning, the wealthiest county in the world. And when people are usually wealthy, they have no need of God. At least the crisis takes place in their life. And they become really desperate, miserable, depressed, living so deep in darkness. Then they become brought to the knees before they want to accept Christ. But this field here in Johnson County is wide open. There are a lot of people who have a lot of religion here. But what I'm noticing, they don't have a very close personal relationship with Christ for a lack of knowledge, knowledge of the Word of God. And I think this kind of same thing is principle go for the rest of the world. We, our country and our county is suffering from famine. And the famine is of the Word of God in Scripture and knowing the truth. We know what took place 50 years ago in this country. Especially me as a foreigner, I think I can have authority to speak. I grew up in the country who not having the scripture, and people were actually not open to the scripture. This country used to have the scripture taught in a public school. That's why this country, in my view, was blessed and beyond any country in the world because they raised generation of people who knew the Lord, have a relationship with the Lord, and they were receiving the blessing from the Father. But I think 50 years ago, this country, in a lot of ways, turned back to the young people. Because for 12 years, people could go to middle school, elementary, kindergarten, high school. They could hear the Word of God every morning in a public school. They could hear every morning the prayer. Imagine how much for 12 years of child growing up from first to 12th grade could be impacting with the truth every day and how much that impacting that young child for the adulthood later. Well, we lost that. We don't have that anymore in this country. The only way we have, though I can see it now, maybe Bible club here and there or FCA through sports. I don't know too many other activities that will be able to be welcomed in public school beside FCA. So it is a crucial important ministry that could reach people when they're still young. Remember, it's so much younger to reach the young child with, it, with the truth. Before their mind is already formed, before they actually conceive the, 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 and be disillusioned with lies that is presented to them for years and years in, in, in public education. So when we can reach the young people in young stages, that's crucial and it's very significant. Because anybody, little child, when he hear the gospel, most of them never reject it. It's so simple. And everybody feel very open, realizing, I'm a sinner. I need a Christ that is not. A child doesn't want a, a wigger way to be able to reason and say, make any excuses. Every child know when he's doing something wrong. Scripture says that. So my challenge today to you is two form. <clears throat> If you're anywhere able to be able to support this ministry, there is no greater access to the young children's lives in your community in Johnson County, the FCA. And I will strongly encourage you. At the same time, individually, 
if you're not in the Word of God, if you're not willing to pray every day, I will really challenge you as a coach. As an athlete, you cannot be effective athletes unless you practice and be dedicating in every practice and day. And we as athletes, we're not only athletes as a spiritual people who follow Christ and children of God. We are in a spiritual warfare. And if we are in a spiritual warfare, every one of us have to put full armor of God upon ourselves every single day to our lives to be very effective. So I don't know where you are spiritually right now. I don't know what is your walk with the Lord. I don't know what your relationship with it is. But remember what Paul's reminding us. we all running the race. And he doesn't want us, and he reminds us, nobody's supposed to quit. Everybody's supposed to finish a race. A race doesn't have to be necessarily sprint, but we all have to stay in the race. And I think for you right now to be able to stay in the race and especially encourage the FCA to be able to be effective in that race, I think you can make a tremendous impact to be able to support this ministry prayfully, financially, and any way if you want to be involved personally. And now obviously you do that because you're here present. So hopefully my, my story today challenged you in multiple ways, not only to help the FCA and ministry to make impact to the life, but also maybe challenge you in a personal way what God has done in my life. I don't know what the future will bring. Remember I shared with you, man, hearts plan his way, but the Lord direct his step. That's a, one of my favorite verse in my life. As a younger person, I want to so bad to know the future. But I'm so glad that God doesn't show me the future. He wants me to walk by faith. And sometimes, a lot of time, he, he actually veiled maybe information, maybe the difficult time that is ahead of me for my benefits. So I can relate. I plan my way. I try my way. And I was so thankful that God was so patient with me. And then he blessed me with a better plan than I was having for myself. And that's all, always the same way. God's way is always the best way. It's not the easiest way, but it's always the best way. So thank you for having me here. Thank you for helping to share my story and what God has done in mind, my personal life. Like I says, I will continue to pray for FCA, and I will continue to uh, be able to be kingdom-minded. And my challenge for you is stay kingdom-minded. You're never going to regret it because Paul says our life will come one day when we leave this earth and we're going to face the fire. All of our works, all of our wealth, all of our accomplishment are going to go through that fire and you're going to be tested. Anything done for his kingdom, for eternity, is going to be purified and be rewards. Anything that is not done for his kingdom is going to be burned like hay, wood, and stubble. So we all have opportunity to make wise investments that are going to last for eternity and change people's lives. And if me as a one coach could make impact on 15,000 people, imagine how much FCA can do that in this county, how much impact they make for eternity. So God bless you. Thank you. And um, thank you for having me. Appreciate it.